Good morning and happy Monday to you. Uh, hope that you're out there enjoying the, the, the sunny weather, uh, making sure you're staying safe, uh, but just maybe enjoying a good walk or a nice bike ride, just getting some sun. Uh, hopefully you are enjoying it. Today, uh, our first reading uh, that we're doing this week is comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, to the Church of Philippi. And uh, it's, it's a strong, strong uh, letter of encouragement. He, he really loves the church in Philippi, and, and he encouraged them to, to do just wonderful things. And, and one of the things that we're, the reading that we're going to do is actually, we think, is one of the oldest hymns, uh, Christian hymns ever, um, you know, ever made here. So one of the things is, and you read along with it, and we're doing Philippians 2, um, verses uh, 5 through 11. As we read along there, you know, think of it as, as a hymn. Uh, and no, you're not going to get me to sing it, but uh, you can, you know, sort of, as you read it, maybe as you read it out loud later on today, you could, you could uh, look at that and go, oh, gosh, how, you know, what, what, what words or what music can I set to this? So, um, we're starting at verse 5 here. It says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, here ends that reading. And uh, I think one of the, the major parts of this, this uh, passage comes right off the bat, and it's in verse 5. Paul is encouraging the, uh, the early Christians, and I think we can take the same encouragement, is that let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. So we're, we're, we are to have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. And the question is, what is this mindset? You know, what, what should we do? And as we can see, and it talks about Jesus, you know, not being, uh, didn't require, being, requ didn't require, I'm sorry, didn't regard equality with God as something to, to be grasped, became nothing. And that's what the, the obedience, he, he became obedient to his father and his father's will. And he, therefore, because he became obedient to his Father's will, that also included the cross. And why was that? Why did it have to include the cross? Because, again, what I said on Sunday is holds true today. And it holds true in this time where Paul is writing a letter, is that God wants us to know, wants the people to know, and the Church of Philippi wants us to know how much he loves us. And so that's why Jesus had to go to the cross. The purpose of Jesus is to make God known. And through Jesus' life, we get to know the Father. And he said the same thing, you know, I'm here so you can know my Father through me. And uh, by being obedient, you can see the results of, of that. He, uh, he's, he's exalted. He's given a name above ever, all other names. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so the, the thing is, is that we are called. We are called to have that same mindset. We, we are called to, to be obedient. But the question is that we, we're, we're, we're not Jesus. We're, we're not headed to the cross. So how can we have that same mindset? And so I think what we have to do is, is backtrack a little bit, go back, and, and if you can join me here, 
by looking at verse 3. Verse 3 in chapter 2, Paul says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regards others as better than yourselves. Let each of you took, look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. And boy, if we could have that mindset, what a great place this world would be, even in these times, in these crises that we have, is not looking at our own interests, but the interests of others. So that's how we become obedient to God, through Jesus Christ. As Jesus showed his obedience to his Father, we need to show our obedience to his Father. And there's a reason why that, that command to love your neighbor is the second greatest command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And it says, how, well, how do we do this? Well, Paul is saying there in that letter, it says, do not do things out of selfish ambition. In humility, wow, that's a hard word, especially for me. Regard others as better than yourselves. And then not looking at your own interests, but at the interests of others. And look at how those three things, in those times like this, where we are locked down and we're supposed to have, we're, we're keeping our social distance away from each other. How can we do this? Do nothing out of selfish ambition. But in humility, regard others as better than ourselves and not looking at your own interests, but the interests of others. This is what having the same mindset of Jesus Christ means. And how hard is that? Oh, it's very hard. It's very hard. It goes against totally our, our way of thinking. It goes totally against the American way. We tend to look out after ourselves first. We tend to judge others instead of trying to, you know, look at them and love them. And we also, you know, we tend to do what is best for me. And then if that sprinkles over to other people, that's great. But Paul is saying something radical here. Paul is saying, no, there's a different way. There's a much different way. So keep those prayers coming to the church. Keep those prayers coming to the healthcare workers, those first responders, those people who are in retail, who are, you know, in the grocery stores and, and who, who are doing other things, you know, taking, you know, buying, you know, you're buying your clothes for, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Keep them in your prayers. It's very, very important. Also, keep those ideas coming. Keep those actions coming. Keep those cards coming. Keep writing those cards. They mean so much to the people who who are locked in place, who are shut in, who don't have someone else who to, to share this with. And again, keep your ideas coming. I, I love getting ideas. Some of you, if you send me ideas, you know, through email and text that we're incorporating already into our, into our worship service and our daily plans. And Paul is encouraging, you know, that we can do this. And the question is why? How can we do this? Because, here's the big thing for us, here's the big takeaway for us, because Christ lives inside of us. We can have the mindset of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ lives in each one of us. And so everything that we're doing, we're not doing it for ourselves, but we're doing it for Jesus Christ. So Paul challenges the church, the Christian church in Philippi, and I'm challenging you to, to keep on encouraging others, to build each other up, to not look at your own interests, but the interests of others. And I hope you challenge me to do the same. The peace of the Lord be with you always.